Brace, and uh, we're really excited you're here, and I want to have the ushers come forward and take the offering. And uh, I want I wanted Jared to come up because we want to do a little talk about worship. Yeah. So we are really excited that you're here. It's been, what, two months? It seems uh, like you've just been totally incorporated into our church. We love it. Yeah. So, Jared, in, in some churches, you know, the, the worship's sort of the warm-up for the sermon, and that's not at all the vision we have at Grace. What's our vision? Our vision at Grace is to um, come together on Sunday and be what God made us, which is worshipers, right? And so if we're not worshiping Jesus, we're going to be worshiping something, um, but we choose here in this place to worship Him, and He created us that way. And so we have the opportunity on Sundays to experience him. Um, he invites us into a relationship with him. And so on Sunday mornings, we sing together and we lift our voices so that we can, like Psalm 34 says, taste and see that he is good. You know, when I was, when I was little, uh, my, my family went one time to Baskin Robbins and my sister, who was little, had never had ice cream before. And my mom took a little, that little spoon, you know, that you get, little sample. And my sister started crying as the spoon went toward her mouth. Then she was screaming. And my mom shoved it into her mouth. And she immediately stopped crying. She says, I, I like it. I like it. And part of tasting and seeing that the Lord is good is that you open up your, your heart to encounter the Lord. And that's, that's what, you're, what you're trying to do, you know, what, what we're intending. That's what we're intending. And... I've been thinking a lot, you know, as we've um, been getting plugged in here to Grace about how God, you know, He made us a singing people. I happen to love music and, and grew up that way, but it's God who created us a singing people and who prescribed to us, like it says in Colossians, to sing to Him with songs and hymns and spiritual songs. And so I, I trust that He knows best, right? So if He asked me to sing to Him, and to commune with him in that way, that's what we're going to do. So in the flow of the service, you know, there's, there's different moods that are created. And sometimes you create a moment of silence. It might be between verses or before or after a bridge. And what, what do we do during those, during those times where there's a gap in the singing that's a space for us? You're creating that for us. What do, what do we do during that time? So the space has, has a couple of, of purposes. Um, one is to stop, to pause in the presence of an almighty God. Um, we're busy. You know, we come from Dallas, and so we moved from Bartlesville, and everybody said, oh, it'll be slower, and it's, are you, you going to be okay with that? And <laughs> it's, it's slower, which is nice. We've loved not being in the car for two hours a day, but <laughs> it's still busy, right? Life is still busy. You still have a job. You still have kids. You still have relationship problems. You still have anxiety and fear and worry. And we fill our mind and our mind just keeps going and our heart keeps going. And we very rarely just stop and take time in front of a father who created us and loved us. So one reason is to stop that cycle and allow the room in our, in our schedule and our week for God to speak. Um, but also something that you can do, we talked about it in first service, is just kind of gratitude 101. It's, it's silence just where you can take a moment to be thankful to God for what he's done, you know, in your life, to remember um, the areas that he's brought you through, um, and just to commune with him. I, I'll keep bringing up that commune word, but just to, it's a relationship, right? It's a back and forth. We, we speak to him, and we should also expect that he's going to speak to us during worship. So Psalm 63 talks about lifting up our hands to his name. Why is what we do with our bodies so crucial in worship? Well, posture is important, right? Um, my wife was gone for a week, and um, so I was here with my parents and my three kids, and she came back, and I was so glad uh, that she was back. <laughs> and, you know, so when she comes back, if I greet her with, hey, yeah, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> you know, it really speaks to my heart of, of, of what I believe about that moment. And so what I do instead is, I'm so glad you're home. 
And so there's, there's a, a sense of when we lift our hands, there's a lot, lots of things that it can mean and lots of things that even scripture kind of suggests that it can mean. But one is just, I'm here with you, God. He asks us to. Um, it's not something that we made up. He asks us to lift our hands. But our posture is important because as we relate to him, um, it showcases what's on the inside, um, how we are actually... Uh, tuned to him, how we are relating to him, but also our posture can help us. Sometimes it jump starts um, things that maybe we don't already feel. Um, So, you know, every once in a while I have my kids hug it out Um, (laughs) and they're not, you know, it's not a moment that they're necessarily feeling each other or have the best attitude, but sometimes our bodies, if we'll lead with our bodies, our spirit and our emotions will follow. So I just, I encourage you, this is a safe space um, to worship God. So I encourage you to lead with your body sometimes and watch God um, honor that and your heart follow. It's a good thing. It's a good point because if you're self-conscious about it and maybe, maybe somebody is self-conscious about it, beginning to do this is really a discipline, you know, that, that God begins to use as time goes on. Um, In Psalm 100, uh, the psalmist talks about shouting joyfully to the Lord. And why is engagement with singing such a a crucial thing? You know, again, as we we relate to him, um, those moments that we have that we're excited for our kids, those moments that we have uh, where somebody has a big win, you know, we're we're willing to shout our voice. Worship is, is in its nature an expression. And so our expression, how we use our voice, is, is indicative of, of what's going on in our relationship with God. So I encourage you um, to express yourself, to express um, heartily and with great joy your love and your affection. Because underneath it all, um, we are praising a, a God who's a creator of the universe, who created us, who also gave us the most amazing gift. And I think of, you know, Christmas morning when my kids open that thing that they've been waiting for and they're, they're just elated and, and their voices go up and, and there's all this energy. You know, we have a, we're, we're praising a Jesus who saved us, right? Um, and who's giving us eternal life. So I, I would love for our voices and our posture and our mannerisms to reflect that. So we also have a lot of kids here. If, if, you're, if you're a kid, ra- raise your hand, say something, yell. Yeah, yeah. So you've got some really cool things you're planning for the kids, right? Yes, we're about to, I mean, we're about to go sing together, actually, right now. In two weeks, it's Family Sunday. Right. And so the kids are going to share a couple of songs. They're actually going to lead us. And so it's really important, you know, that we're teaching our kids how to worship. I love that they are in here watching their parents worship. It's a huge thing to me. Um, But in a couple weeks, they're actually going to lead us on Sunday morning, and some songs are going to be really fun. Awesome. Thanks for all you're doing. Yeah, no problem.